This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Happy New Year, Spuds! I hope you're all having a great start. We're a few days in, right? And I wanted to kick the year off, as I have done for the past couple, few, several, multiple years, with some wholesome memes, showing that sometimes everyone is okay. I don't know what happened to my voice on okay. I struggled to say it. Do I really believe it? Yes. I really do think that sometimes people can be okay. <laughs> it's not all doom and gloom in the world. So today we're just going to be having a little look through some wholesome memes, wholesome things. I haven't seen these yet, so we're going to be looking at them for the first time together. And I just thought it's a really cute way to start off a new year, fresh start, some positivity out there. You know, some phobia stuff will come up soon, but for now, we're all about the positivity, so are you ready? Oh yeah. How did he do this? Why did he do this? Oh, it's a cat. Oh, the cat moved the sofa cushion? Kitty knows what Kitty wants, huh? The cat's like, I sit here under the cushion. Not on the cushion. Under the cushion. So how did he do this? Strunk. Why did he do this? Comfy. He is strong and he wants to be comfy. Oh yes, we love a strong, comfortable kitten. I love cats. I have two cats, Prawn and Apollo. They are just beautiful and I'm obsessed. I like your pride shirt. Thanks. Pink Floyd shirt. Mm-hmm. Very pridey. Mike was happy to support the LGBTQ community even on accident. Oh, I love it. There's not like a, huh? That's not pride. No. Ew. Ew. This is music. I'm a music fan. Not an LGBTQ Ally. But no, Mike was happy regardless. Mike is just like, yes, I support both Pink Floyd and LGBTQ plus people. Beautiful. I have seen this as a thing. What was it like? There were like homophobic people complaining about this t-shirt or using this as well as like a normal kids going in and then the triangle and it being like the school curriculum and then them coming out gay as if learning about LGBTQ plus people will just make everybody gay. I don't see the problem. I mean, it won't happen, but yeah, the homophobes are just scared. But we like Mike. We support Mike. We support Mike's support. I have a really bad ulcer, like right here. And it honestly, like it stings every time I talk. I don't know what's happened. I wake up feeling like my cheek is swollen and it's been going on for like 10 days now. And Oh, it's a lot. But we're, we're wholesome today. We're not talking about mouth ulcers. 30 year old me around real adults. Oh, baby Yoda, who does have a name, Grogu. Did I get that right? I don't know very much. <gasps> I did. 30 year old me around teenagers. <laughs> Old, I feel. I cannot do a Yoda voice. I'm so sorry. I will not do that again, I promise. Old, I feel. Yes. By the time this video comes out, I'm gonna be like six weeks off turning 30 and this is the vibe. If I'm around like, you know, people with kids and a routine and just, you know, their shit together. Carol, get your shit together, Carol. And I'm just standing there like, hello. <laughs> I feel like a real adult, yeah. <laughs> but then, yeah, hanging around, I'd say it doesn't even need to be teenagers, just anybody from like early 20s, younger. I'm like, hmm. I'm very, very well aware that we are not in the same stage of life. <laughs> I feel like I'm in this in-between limbo of being a proper adult and being young. Not that 30 is old, or like mid 30s or 40 is even old, just, you know what I mean. Oh. A short story about decisions. <gasps> oh. If this is not Apollo, wow, yes. I say if this is not Apollo, if this is not me, I look outside the door. Oh no, too cold. <laughs> not for me today. I love this. I also found this really cute video of a dog. I don't know if they were popped outside or they jumped outside and they landed in the snow and then they like stood still. And then they instantly like jumped like 180 and then ran straight back inside. And I was like, yes, I fully relate. A good decision was made. You dip the toe beans, the toe beans are chilly. You retreat back inside to where it's nice and warm. So my mum accidentally ordered an extra small dog bed, but he's still grateful. No. Oh my God. This is too cute. I think my voice just broke. This is too sweet. Oh, a little golden retriever. Oh my God. I love the energy of golden retrievers. I like golden retriever videos and I like saying hi to golden retrievers. I have a thing about like big dogs and being around them for a long time. They're just, they're a lot. I do like them, but I don't think I could have a larger dog. 
just personally. But this is so cute. This feels like such a golden retriever thing to do. I do not fit, but I, I will sit. I will be grateful, I will enjoy. This is now my new nap spot. Thank you. The nephew is introduced to Hot Wheels this year and asked if we could have a Hot Wheels themed pumpkin pie. We had to improvise. I think you did a fantastic job. What a bizarre thing to ask for though. If you get into Hot Wheels and then you're specifically like, I want the pumpkin pie to be Hot Wheels themed. Technically, anything could have been Hot Wheels themed. A turkey? What is that sweet potato thing with marshmallows on? Because part of me thinks it looks absolutely glorious, and the other part of me thinks it looks absolutely horrendous. I don't know. I, kinda, I can't tell if I think it's a great thing or a really, really, really not, not great thing. But tell me if it tastes good, I want to know. That could have been Hot Wheels, but I, I love the pumpkin pie specificity and the little cloud of smoke coming out the car. It doesn't seem like a very healthy Hot Wheels car, but there we go. They improvised and it's beautiful. Well done. Today my five-year-old laughed at this painting in the middle of a museum for like six minutes. I feel like inside we all want to have the reaction <laughs> of that five-year-old. I've never looked at a painting or a real person and quite so confidently been able to say they definitely look like a thumb. But today, that painting really looks like a hairy thumb with a personality. Interesting. That's so cute though. Hey, look, art is meant to provoke feelings and this painting made that little child really happy. So good job, painting. Overheard a teenage boy buying a Valentine's card that said, we are the same kind of weird. Shop assistant said, is this for your girlfriend? And he said, no, it's for my grandma. My grandma. Oh. Sometimes teenage boys can be wholesome too. It's for my grandma. That's really cute. Oh, we're the same kind of weird. I can't. My husband. What the heck happened? I'm so sorry. Testing, testing. Okay, we're back. My husband and I wake up every morning and bring our coffee out to our garden and sit and talk for hours every morning. I have thoughts. It never gets old and we never run out of things to talk to, to talk. Love him so much. Very sweet. I was just having this conversation, like Sharp and I were just talking about this with another couple. Friends we have that are in a relationship with each other too, about how like both of us, as in both sets of couples, we live together, work together, and just don't run out of things to say or get bored of one another. Not judging other people's relationships, but for me, like I wouldn't want it any other way. Like I'm living my life with my best friend and I want to share everything of my life with them and all the moments. And whenever something happens and Shabba's not there, I just wish she was there so that I could tell her about it and share it with her. And if something cool happens, the first person I think of is Shabba. If anything happens in my life and she's not already there, I instantly want to tell Shaba. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, just not running out of things to talk about. But the one comment I would have about this is how early are you waking up if every morning you can talk for hours before needing to do life? Like, I respect it. I'm not judging if that's your routine. I'm just curious. Like, if you go to work or, or do things, are you getting up at like 5am? I don't know. I mean, I love Shaba. I don't know if I'd get up at 5am. We can talk in the evening or throughout the day. We'll fly to our next location, son. <gasps> a little baby, a baby duck, a baby goose, a baby duck, a duck, a baby duck. But I can't fly, dad. That's why we take the plane. Air duck. Oh, making ducks cute. I mean, ducklings are very cute. Some ducks are cute. I got bitten by a duck once, mean duck. It was at school as well. There's just random ducks on the school playing field and then they charged. No. <laughs> ducks. This duck is cute. This is restoring my faith in ducks. I like the fact that the duck has glasses. A little spectacled duck dad. I wonder if the baby duck could have just sat on the back and didn't need a pla- Do you know, why do I take it too seriously? I'm so sorry. No, this is very, very cute. Very cute. Asked my mum if she could bring my charger downstairs. She replied, shout to the dog. Greetings. That'll be 23 treatos. What an innovative way of using your dog for tasks. Integrating them into the household chores. Hello dog, you live here rent free. We feed you for free. You do not help with the utility bills. You will do chores. Your first is transporter of electronic goods. Yes, uh-huh, wow. And on that note, before we move on to even more wholesome memes, did you know that I moonlight as an artisanal cheese carver? Yes, that is a very truthful fact about me.
That's right, I have fulfilled my lifelong dream of becoming a cheese carver and doing it as a living, yes. And I wouldn't have been able to do it without Squarespace handling all of my ooey gooey website needs. Squarespace is truly brilliant to use. <laughs> Their fluid engine and pre-built designs make it easy to build a professional website that would fit into any category. You can customize them, use so many features, and all with a simple drag and drop. How gouda is that? Our Squarespace website was super fun and easy to make, as was my website for my absolutely real and not at all made up offering of artisanal cheese carving, yes. One of my favorite features is the commenting system on Squarespace. You can have like counts, you can thread comments, and there are great spam and abuse filters to keep you safe as you build your cheese cheesy empire, or whatever kind of empire you are wanting to build. Squarespace even have passwords and page locks, so you can construct new web pages before you even launch them, and create private areas for special visitors behind a password. So whatever your website idea, if you're looking to build a community, if you're an awesome entrepreneur, or if you want to be a rival cheese carver, use Squarespace to turn any idea into a website. Drop a comment below and let me know what other amazing job titles I could have, because it is an absolute dream to be working with Squarespace because we have used their website services for years and maybe, just maybe, I might build it. To get started yourself, go to squarespace.com to start your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, you can head to squarespace.com forward slash jammy dodger to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. The link's in the description box as well. Easy cheesy lemon cheesy, damn it. On with the video. <laughs> LMAO, a boy messaged me on Instagram. This is really weird, but we matched on the dating app like four years ago and you said you wanted to be a sports writer and I just came across an article of yours today, so congrats. <gasps> Why am I tearing up? Oh, oh, that's so sweet. He paid attention. Can you imagine somebody like being that invested? I hope that is on like a truly wholesome level because that's really sweet. Like finding this out about somebody and just like, hey, do you know what? I see that you have like fulfilled your goal and I might be a stranger or somebody you don't know very well or someone you've not spoken to in years, but I just want to let you know I'm proud of you. Or like, that's really cool. Or I'm super happy that you're achieving what you want to achieve. I love that energy. What's an oddly romantic thing that's happened to you on a date? <gasps> what is an oddly romantic thing that's happened to you on a date? Was on a date with a guy and we kissed and his watch started beeping really loud and we looked down and it said, abnormal heart rate detected. Lol. Oh, feelings, you were, your feelings were sold out by the watch. That's kind of cute though. I don't think you have to question if he was into it or not. Bring back my wheelbarrow. <gasps> Bring back their wheelbarrow. Why did you take their wheelbarrow? Thank you for bringing back my wheelbarrow. It worked. Oh, do you think someone just like accidentally took their wheelbarrow or do you think somebody stole their wheelbarrow and then saw the sign and was like, do you know what? I feel kind of bad and I think this wheelbarrow means something to this person. So I'm going to give it back. Either way, like, Yes, learning from mistakes and admitting when you're wrong and being like, hey, here is your wheelbarrow. Ta-da. I don't think I even own a wheelbarrow. I don't think I've ever owned a wheelbarrow. Is that when you become truly like Yoda? Is that being a real adult owning a wheelbarrow? I'm curious. Had lunch with my son at school for his birthday. He can pick two kids to sit with him and no one I had never met. Oh, right. Why did I say a no one? Let me start this again. Had lunch with my son at school for his birthday. He can pick two kids to sit with him and one I had never met. I asked afterward who he was and he said, oh, I don't really know him, but no one had picked him for birthday lunch before. And just overall, kids are better than we are. Oh, he picked a kid because he hadn't been picked for birthday lunch before. Oh, that is so sweet. Honestly, I think some kids can just be really pure and this is very sweet but I do I do think it also speaks a lot to how they've been raised as well so this kid was clearly like yeah do you know what I want to include people for my birthday he broke a plate and he's scared of the punishment <gasps> oh no that poor baby there should be no punishment it was an accident leave him alone no I broke it let him go let him go no <laughs> oh cats can be really clumsy like and just breaks that they're so curious about things falling and they don't realize that it will break so they're just like boop oh dear and that you know it's broken too late done oh poor little kitty cat my dog was terrified of the fireworks so my cat went and cuddled up with her my heart is crying still <gasps> why <laughs> why is this so cute do you know i think animals have a really good sense to know when other beings need support so after i had surgery apollo just 
didn't leave me alone. He was like lying next to me or he'd lay on me, which was at times really annoying because he'd walk all over where I'd had surgery and it was like, <gasps> Polo. But then, you know, we just shift him up higher a bit and he'd sit on my chest and he'd like snuggle in and it was really cute. And I was like, you know, don't you? And the other night, Chabba wasn't feeling too great and he just cuddled up next to her. Prawn doesn't do that so much. Prawn is just like, hey, I want love. And he just kind of like stomps over and he's like, hmm. And he goes, Brr, and he purrs so loud. But Apollo is definitely, I mean, we think Prawn is absolutely, you know, half a brain cell short of having a whole brain cell, but we love him dearly. Apollo is, he's a clever cat and he knows. He knows when you need some love. Okay, this one takes it home this year. Green screen, she's wearing a cloud round her waist, like cotton wool. <gasps> oh, and on her legs, so her legs disappear when she does the weather, so she looks like a little floating cloud. She looks like the thing from the Mario Kart, you know, beep, beep, you know, the, the one at the start of the Mario Kart race, I can't remember, Koopa? Let me Google what they're called. I got that so wrong. Oh, Lachitas are Koopas who ride clouds. Okay, so I got the species right, but the name? Specific name wrong? Anyway, they ride clouds too. She is a Koopa. Wondered why my dog wouldn't come when I called him, then I found this. Well, that's a little bit cute, isn't it? Oh my god. It's Bambi. Well, no. I hope that this deer does not have the same family setup or trauma as Bambi, but you know, they look like Bambi, baby Bambi. My son's drawing of safe. Oh, in the middle of the bed between the parents. Oh, the parents look kind of creepy, not gonna lie, but it's still cute. Kids drawings can be hilarious. This one is just adorable. Service dog receives his master's degree in occupational therapy from Clarkson University after attending every class with his human. You give that dog his degree. He's worked hard for that. Attending every class with his human. I mean, I think the human did a good job attending every class. I did not attend every class at university. You could listen to the lectures online, okay? It was very tempting. But yes, go doggy with a master's degree. Did they actually give the dog a certificate and everything? I think that's great. Did they get professional photos done? Oh, it's so beautiful. Good, you have scrolled for so long. You have reached the sanctum of the coned cats. They wish you a nice life. Welcome to the sanctum of the coned cats. How do we like this, the sanctum of coned cats? Comment it, do you have a cat? If you have a cat, what is your cat's name? What is your cat's breed? How old is your cat? What is your cat's favorite color? And their occupation, thank you. Stop shaming people for reading kids books. Who's shaming you for reading kids books? You can read whatever book you want. Adult books are about sad people having affairs while kids books have a magic tree house or a worm driving an apple. You tell me who's winning. I wanna read about a worm driving an apple? Of course, I don't think like, there's so much stigma around like, oh, that's a YA book. Like you can't read a book for like preteens and kids and teenagers and stuff. That, no, don't do that. One of my favorite book series is The Enemy by Charlie Higson. And I read that in adulthood. And that is technically a book for like young adults. So like young to mid teens. But screw that, it's so fantastic. I want to read it. I'm not going to cut myself off from all these amazing stories and books and worlds that I could explore just because of an age range. I mean, personally, I wouldn't read like the really young kids pictures books just because they're over so quickly. I want something I can get stuck into, but I'm not going to deny myself reading something just because of an age. Why? Why would I do that? If adults can't read, then why do adults write them? Hmm? A baby. Pulling my hand. Me. Where are we going? Baby. Gibberish mixed with stomping and screaming. Me. You son of a bitch, I'm in. Babies are so weird. They're so weird in the most wonderful way. I have no idea. You know when you meet someone else's kid and they're at that stage where they can talk but it's very like jumbled and like mumbly and like the words aren't formed properly and their parents are just like yes bananas are yellow and you're like what the heck I heard blah 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 blah. How did you get bananas are yellow from that? That's maybe the baby's not speaking gibberish and they're just like silly adult human or silly older human how do you not understand this perfect perfect diction in london there's a woman who goes every day on the underground and sits on the platform just to listen to the announcement recorded by her husband in 1950. okay shaba's told me a story about this i trust shaba and that she believed it was true when she told me but i want to read it okay so specifically the story of embankment stations announcement so 
let's find the information. The Mind the Gap announcement was first heard in 1969 and was recorded by sound engineer Peter Lodge. Peter originally hired an actor to voice the recording, but royalties were expected, and as the announcement would be played thousands of times a day, this simply was not financially viable. Oh, but imagine if they'd gone for that. How rich would that actor be? Subsequently, Peter made the recordings himself until someone more suited could be found. Over the years, the message had been recorded by many people. However, here we want to talk of the one voiced by actor Oswald Lawrence, who made the recordings for the Northern Line in the late 60s slash early 70s. Oh, so he's born in 1929 and he was married to Margaret McCollum. He died in 2007 at the age of 78. Margaret was devastated at the loss of her husband, but one place where she could relive the happy memories was on the platform at Embankment Station, where she would sit and listen to Oswald's voice. Oh. Oh my god, I actually feel like I'm gonna cry. One day in November 2012, she made her regular visit to the platform only to find her husband was no longer there as the PA system had been updated. That is so rude. How dare they do that? Deeply saddened. I'm deeply saddened reading about it and I wasn't even married to him. By what had happened, Margaret was comforted by station staff who were unaware of the value the previous recording held for her. As the PA system had now been digitalized, it seemed an almost impossible ask to retrieve the tapes and reinstate the announcement with Oswald's voice. However, Transport for London staff delved deep into the archives and found the old tapes which were digitalised and restored. <gasps> the story therefore has a happy ending. If you ever visit the northbound platform of the Northern Line at Embankment Station, the voice of Oswald Lawrence lives on to the present day. What to many may seem just a regular safety announcement, the Mind the Gap message brings much happiness to one special person. Oh, that's so cute. I think that just broke me. I'm assuming that, I mean, this looks like the same person because like, this is the Northern Line and it's embankment, but it says 1950. So it just, I got the date a bit wrong, but I'm assuming there's not more than one story like this to do with embankment. That would be very unlikely. Talking of the London Underground though, does anybody else think there's a certain platform or there's like on some platforms when you get off the train and the door opens, it plays the first two notes of the song from Home Alone. I'm not going to, recreate it because I can't. But every time Sharp and I get off one of those tubes, we're walking along the platform, like doing the rest of the song, because it's like the first two just sound exactly, yeah, that's cute. If they ever change that, I will be sad. What's happening? Somebody's skipping and somebody's walking. Oh, and then started skipping as well. Adults can skip too. That's cute. Skipping is fun. Don't deny yourself skipping because you feel like you're too old. Just learned from my mum that my brother is contributing so heavily to chocolate milk sales at the local supermarket that they've requested to be notified when he leaves for college so that they don't overstock. How much chocolate milk is this guy drinking? I mean, this is very cute, but I worry. How much are they spending on chocolate milk? It must be a balance between like the size of the local supermarket and the size of this guy's appetite for chocolate flavored milk. That's ma- wow. It's kind of cool. He must be a bit of a local celebrity, just like, oh, chocolate milk boy, yeah. Wow. Never ventures into strawberry or banana or vanilla or even salted caramel. If you don't love me at my- oh, that's Will- Will Poulter. You don't deserve me at my- yeah, he had like this mid to late 20s glow up, didn't he? Because like, how old is Will Poulter? He's the same age as me. No, he's a year older than me, so he's going to be 31 this month. And I swear it's only been in like the last couple of years that everyone's been like, wow, this dude's hot, which he is. And he was always kind of like seen as goofy looking. I wonder if it's an age thing or if it's just like a new hairstyle and growing out the facial hair a bit, but he looks very good. Mm -hmm. I'm really, like, I used to be so scared of turning 30 and not being, like, young anymore and, like, in my 20s and stuff. But the older I get, the more comfortable I am with myself. And I don't look like Will Poulter, I'm not saying that. But, like, the better I feel I look because I'm growing into my style and my beard is filling in and, like, I, I'm more confident to try new things. And just, I look back at photos of myself in, like, my early to mid-twenties and I'm just like, I appreciate where I was, but I wouldn't want to go back there. So I kind of like getting older. Having gay parents must be horrible. Why? Why? I mean, you either get twice the usual amount of dad jokes or get stuck into an infinite loop of go ask your mum. These are the kind of gay jokes that are funny. Yes, bad comedians, take note. This is funny. This is where LGBT plus people are not the butt end of a joke. Could you imagine that? Just stuck between dad jokes or go ask your mum. <laughs>
I've been hearing a frog singing from inside our wind chimes for a month or so, but today I found out it's not just one frog, it's a whole secret society- Oh! <gasps> frogs sing? Do frogs sing? I didn't know this. That's so cool. You have a secret society of singing frogs in your wind chimes. How tiny are these frogs to fit in the wind chimes? We need to Google this. Do frogs sing. Males of many species of frogs start singing as soon as they emerge. When those same rains and melting snow ensure that their eggs and tadpoles have enough water to survive until they develop into frogs. Oh. Each male in a chorus calls at a slightly different pitch and individuals often alternate and overlap calls in a pleasing manner. When mounted, let's not go into that bit. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> this is a wholesome video. That's the end of the video. I'm not wrapping it up because I'm embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed at all. That's fine. Frogs can procreate, but it is genuinely the last meme of the video. So I hope you enjoyed this wholesome start to the new year on the channel. Please let me know if you liked it. I really enjoy this little tradition every year. I think it's really good fun. I think it's a nice like fresh start to everything and just sometimes everybody's okay and sometimes frogs sing and straight people really do love each other. <laughs> Anyway, on that note, think about giving the video a thumbs up and subscribing if you want to, but no pressure. You can also go click the little button downstairs. You'll see it near the subscribe button that says join and you can become a member of this channel. You can be a tater tot or a member of the spud squad, whichever one you prefer. Again, no pressure, just shouting it out. And yeah, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Much love. Bye.